Hi students, so today we are going to the chapter circle and uh, one of the easiest chapter in class 10th. Uh, there are basically five theorems and if we know these theorems then any question can be done in any of the exercises. So let's understand uh, the basics of the circle and then we will come to the theorems. So what is a circle? This simply a round figure is called circle. Uh, the point in the middle is the center. Any two points on the circumference if we join is called the chord. Now this chord divides the circumference in two parts. The minor arc and the major arc. This chord with the circumference makes a minor segment and the remaining part is the major segment. Again very few basics which you already know. The line passing through the center from one point to another point of the circumference is called the diameter. The point from the center joining any point on the circumference is the radius. And this is all we should know to understand the five theorems. So let's start with the theorem number one. What is theorem number one? This is a circle. Okay. We now know that there is a minor arc. This is a minor arc. The remaining is the major arc. Now this minor arc makes some angle at the center. Okay. And the same minor arc will make an angle on the remaining circumference. Okay. I hope this is clear. The same minor arc makes some angle at the center. And with the same minor arc you can make an angle on the remaining part of the circumference. Now there are two angles, there is a relationship between the two angles and that is theorem number one. What is the relationship? If this angle is x, the angle at the center is 2x. Now the theorem says that the angle made at the center by the minor arc is two times of the angle made by the same arc on the other part of the circumference. This is theorem number one. I hope you can make out if this is angle x, this angle is 2x and this is theorem number 1. Now what is theorem number 2? Again we make a circle. Okay. Again we have a minor arc. Right. Now this minor arc, as you know, it makes a minor segment. Now this minor arc it makes two angles on the major segment. This can be this and it can be made like this. Can you understand that the minor segment or the minor arc is making two angles on the major arc? A bit different from this. Now there is a relationship between this angle and this angle. What is the relationship? If this angle is x, this angle is also x. So the two angles made by the minor arc on the remaining circumference or the major arc are equal and this is theorem number 2. Now this can also look like this. So this angle will also be x. I can make it this angle. This angle is also x. So this is theorem number 2. Now let's understand what is theorem number 3. Which is I think the easiest one to understand. The diameter on the semicircle if it makes an angle the angle made by the diameter on the semicircle if it makes this angle this angle will always be 90 degree and this is theorem number 3. I think this was the easiest one. This is theorem 2, theorem 1 and this is theorem 3. I just repeat the diameter which is a line passing through the center 
if it makes an angle on the semicircle, this angle is always 90 degrees. So if this is 90 degree, this is also 90 degree. This is also 90 degree. So this angle is always 90 degree and this is theorem number 3. Let me make another circle. We are now going to study theorem number 4. Theorem number 4 talks about a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle. So if I make a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle, there is a relationship between the angles. Which angles? The opposite angle. I'm talking about this angle, which is I'm marking 1, and this angle, which I'm marking 3. This is 2, this is 4. There is a relationship between the opposite angles. What is that relationship? The relationship is angle 1 plus angle 3 is 180 degree. The sum of the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral is 180 degree, which means angle 2 plus angle 4 is also 180 degree. Simple to understand. So the theorem 4 talks about the cyclic quadrilateral. What is a cyclic quadrilateral? A quadrilateral inscribed in a circle, which means the vertex of the quadrilateral should always be on the circumference of the circle. And the last theorem is just an extension of theorem number 4. And what is this? Again, I draw a circle. Again, I draw a quadrilateral. And what I do is I extend one of the sides of a quadrilateral. I hope you can see that I have extended one side of the quadrilateral. This angle is the exterior angle of this side. This is the exterior angle. All these are interior angles. This is the exterior angle. Now, see what the theorem says. The exterior angle of the quadrilateral, say this is angle 3, will be equal to the interior opposite angle which I am saying it is 4. So the exterior angle 3 is equal to the interior opposite angle. This is theorem number 5. And beyond this there is no other theorem and all the questions can be solved only on the basis of this, these 5 theorems. So what kind of question look like? Now if the angle given at the center is say 130 degree, what is the angle made on the major arc by the same minor arc? So what will be the angle? This will be 65 degree or half of the angle made at the center. This is a question from the book. Okay. And uh, so now this is the easiest one, theorem 3. You have to recognize the moment you see a line drawn from the center, immediately find what is that angle which will subtend 90 degree at the diameter. Alright, so in the next uh, video we will uh, do a lot of questions based on these five theorems. So just recall, remember, revise and we meet in the next video.